we are talking about trigonometry functions and graphs lesson number six, and we're graphing primary trig functions. We first, first should talk about periodic functions. A periodic function is a function whose graph repeats regularly over some interval of the domain. So this interval could be 2 pi or 360 degrees. The length of this interval is called the period of the function. The amplitude of a periodic function is defined as half the distance between the maximum and minimum values of the function. We can get this amplitude by saying take, finding the maximum y value, minusing the minimum y value, and then dividing by 2. Let's take a look at class example 1 and determine the period and amplitude for each of the following periodic functions. So we can see that this is periodic because it goes up to a point, comes down, and then back up. And you can see right at this point here, it starts again going up and then down and then back up. So we can see here that the period of this function is equal to 8 because it repeats on a cycle of 8 as the interval. Now what is the amplitude? Well the amplitude, if we find the maximum here, the max is 10. Here there's a minimum. It's equal to negative 10. So the amplitude is going to equal the maximum minus the minimum divided by 2. This is 10 minus negative 10 divided by 2. This is 20 divided by 2, which is equal to 10. If we take a look at this periodic graph, this is a little more smooth than this one. This one kind of has some points to it, but this is a smooth. And let's fi find the period. So the period, we need to find a nice spot where we know it starts and then see where it ends up. So let's take a look at this point here at 1 and then goes up and then down past it comes back up to this point. So let's review part B here again. We're going to look at the period here and if we take a look at this point here it looks like this point is 1 then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So we have a difference here between 1 all the way to 7. 7 minus 1 that is 6. The period is 6. If we take a look at the amplitude, it's maximum minus minimum. We have the maximum of 6 minus the minimum of 2, negative 2. So 6 minus negative 2 divided by 2, that's 8 over 2, and the amplitude is 4. If we take a look at part C, let's take a look at the period of part C. We have this starts right there, and then it goes over, up, over, and down. And so there it starts again. And you can see from 0 to 10, we have the period. The period is equal to 10 here. And the amplitude, we can see the maximum is 6 minus 2. So if we talk about amplitude is equal to max minus min, we have 6 minus 2 divided by 2. That's equal to 4. 4 divided by 2, and that is 2. So the amplitude is 2. So graphing primary trig functions, we're going to learn the graphs of y equals sine x, y equals cos x, and y equals tan x. So what we'll do is we'll use a table of values and graph each function on the domain of 0 to 360 degrees. Use the graphing calculator to complete the graph. Let's complete the following table, and we'll find the values for 0 to 360. So we'll just go to two decimal places if it's needed. y equals sine x, sine of 0 is equal to 0, sine of 30 degrees is equal to 0 0.50. 0. Sine of 60 degrees, let's turn on our calculator and take a look. Here, if we were to make sure that our calculator was in degree mode, then we can say, okay, sine of 60 degrees is equal to 0 0.866. I'm going to go to 3. Sine of 9 degrees is 1. Sine of 120 is equal to, again, 0.866. Sine of 150 is equal to 0 0.50. Sine of 180 is equal to 0. And continue on, sine of 210 is negative 0 0.5. Sine of 240, let's try that, is going to be negative 0 0.866. Sine of 270 is negative 1. Sine of 300 is equal to negative 0 0.866, sine of 330 is equal to negative 0 0.5, and sine of 360 is equal to 0. 
Now I know I skipped the calculator for a few of those, but you can certainly verify for yourself. So let's plot the points on the grid, and we're not going to join the points though. So sine of zero is zero. Sine of 30 degrees right here would be 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be at 2.5 is right there. And then sine of 60 is going to be at 0.866. So that's almost 0.9. So right about there, I guess. And then at 1 for 90 degrees. In fact, we can skip to 180 and make that 0. We know that 360 is 0. And here, which one did we miss here? We missed 120 is about 0.866. 150 is about 0.5 is right there. And then 210 is negative 5. Or it's negative 0.5. So it's right about there. And almost there. And this is negative 1. Then back to there. Back to there. So we haven't joined the points, but you can see them, I think, pretty clearly. It's right there. And there's a bit of symmetry happening, you can see, right? All right, so graph y equals sine x on your calculator You're using degree mode and following this window format. So we have 360 degrees, well, negative 360 to 540, going at 30 at a time. And let's do that. So here we have y equals sine x, window settings, negative 360, 540, going by 30. And graphing that, we can see, oh, it looks kind of curvy. Okay, so let's use that then to connect these dots in a, in a smooth way. So here we have this comes through, and there you have it. And are we going to complete it all the way to 540? Okay, so I, I just finished the graph for you. It kind of looks like that. All the way from negative 360 to 540. So you can see how there's this re repetitive thing that's happening. But here you can see that there's a main cycle that that's happening there. Okay, so y equals sine x is a periodic function whose graph continues indefinitely to the left or right. And this is just a partial graph shown from negative 360 to 540. But we might even see it, you know, 0 only to 360 or 0 to 540 or something like that. Let's take a look at example number two. We're going to state the following for the function y equals sine x, where x is defined on the set of real numbers and expressed in degrees. So the domain here, well, x can be anything. When we take a look at this picture, you don't see any holes whatsoever. The amplitude, the amplitude of the maximum minus the minimum, 1 minus negative 1 divided by 2, the amplitude is 1. And where are the y-intercepts? If we're talking about degrees, then the, sorry, the x-intercepts. Where are the x-intercepts? The x-intercepts are at 0, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. And a whole bunch more within this one. You can see that it's negative 360, negative 180, 0, 180, 360, 540. So on the set of real numbers, really, we can say, we can actually say that, well, it's any multiple of pi, right? Any multiple of 180. So it could be 180 degrees, n, where n could be any integer. Well, what's the range? Well, the sine x is considered a bounded function, which means that there is an actual maximum and minimum here. So this range, the y values are between negative 1 and 1. The period is 360 degrees. And the y-intercepts, it's at 0, 0. So let's take a look at class example 3. A student was asked to reproduce the graph in exploration B in radian mode. So what kind of graphing calculator window format would we use? Well, remember that we went from negative 360 degrees to 540. So we have to convert this 360 degrees to radian. So we can say this is negative 2 pi 
and then it goes all the way to well 540 gets 180 times 3 right so this goes all the way to 3 pi so there it is and remember in degrees it went by 30 degrees but in radians we would have to say pi over 6 so let's sketch the graph of y equals sine x for 0 to 2 pi showing the intercepts well just a quick sketch this way it goes up to a maximum down to a minimum and back up and this spot here is going to happen at 180 degrees or in other words it happens at pi this is 2 pi this point here is pi over 2 and this one point negative this negative or this minimum here is at 3 pi over 2 okay you have enough to tackle your assignment and I will see you in class.